Friends, welcome back to the Wild at Heart podcast. And as is our current rhythm, before we jump in to this week's subject, we want to pause. We want to center ourselves. We want to let go of the crazy and get out of the madness of your day and just find God, just center ourselves in the presence of Jesus. So let's take a moment to get quiet. Just check in on your breathing. Check in on your body. Like, are you tense? Are you taking short, shallow breaths? Right. So just take a moment now and give everything to God. Jesus, we do. We give everyone and everything to you so that in this moment, in this podcast, we might find you. And so we pray for union. We pray for union, Jesus. We ask you to restore our union with you. Recenter us in Christ. Give us your heart. Give us your mind today. Meet us personally in this week's podcast as we listen today. Jesus, come. Amen. I hope you like the new music, friends. It's one of my favorites. You can find it down in the show notes if you need to know the, the title and composer but it helps, it just helps us get out of the crazy and into a sacred space. So it's John and Alan here this week, and I actually have something that's been on my heart to share with you for a while, but I think it's particularly important here in the beginning of a new year. Mm -hmm. Uh, I want to begin with a story. So this morning, I woke up a little earlier than normal. I I woke up already like unrestful, anxious, uncertain. And I wasn't quite sure why. So I just, I just laid there. It was earlier than I wanted to get up. And we turned the heat off at night, uh, which in the winter in Colorado, our house is freezing in the morning, <laughs> but it's part of the ritual. And so I, I laid there in bed, not wanting to get out <laughs> in the cold but also because I was really curious of, wait a second, I, I don't feel good emotionally. And what I was feeling, I would begin to just say, I was just feeling lousy. That, like I couldn't name it at first. I just go, man, I'm not, I just, I don't feel great. And I've learned to pay attention. Yes. Listen a little more carefully to my soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go there and what is it? What do you mean, John? What's lousy? And it, I began to enter into then what felt like sadness, which I was able to finally locate in loneliness. Hmm. And because I'm attuned to doing this now, and this is the practice I want to help our friends dial into, I am just so aware that it is the vulnerable places in me that the enemy attacks. Yes. And especially unattended vulnerable places, just things I just tend to kind of push away, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe another day, maybe I'll deal with that some other time. But instead, I laid there in bed this morning because I could also feel like I'm not looking forward to this day. I'm I'm not bouncing out of bed with joy and excitement (laughs) and yippee, here we go. Mm Mm-hmm. And as I located the source of, I guess what I would have first identified is, man, I just don't feel great. I don't feel hopeful, right? Mm -hmm. It began to recognize, I don't know, there's like a sadness here. Oh, I think what I'm actually locating in my own soul is loneliness. But what I was also aware of was that the enemy was already there like a bully, picking on it. Interesting. Like, like yeah. kick you when you're down. Yeah. Yeah. 
kind of yeah. thing. And so what I was also feeling was I was feeling far from God. I was feeling bereft. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was feeling disconsolate and, and recognizing, wait a second, I, I think two things are at play here. I think there's a legitimate place of loneliness in me that's feeling sad. Right. But there's something else going on as well. Hmm. And it was as I was able to name it, recognize it, and begin to pray about it, I actually recovered joy. I, I'm in a great place now. I, I smile, yeah. smile on my face. I'm looking forward to the day. I'm stoked about this podcast, but this is this is something I've been wanting to bring before our listeners again to say, hey gang, you know, the enemy didn't take a holiday. Right. And he right. he's not thrown by a new year. Like he he is a predator. And Revelation says that he's filled with fury because he knows his time is short. Mm-hmm. And he is, he's coming after me and my friends. He's, he's coming after the saints in particular. Well, everyone, humanity, right here. It's in the places of vulnerability. So I just want to kind of expose this today, Alan, and talk about how we deal with it. It's really good that you share that story and name that because it would have been really easy for you, John, to have had that feeling but not name it but just something was off. You didn't feel maybe good or in a, in a great place. And then just jump out of bed, check your phone, yep. get on with the day and, and kind of be stuck in that place with this vague sense of lack of joy or, or some feeling that you couldn't quite name. And what you just described, how long did that take? Like before you got out of bed, was that Five minutes, 10 minutes? Well, okay, so it took place in stages. So wake up feeling lousy, mm -hmm. but lay there long enough to say, wait a second, I don't want to live my whole day like this. I don't want to live a week like this. I better pay attention. What? What's up? What's going on? So the first stage was tuning in. Okay. What am I actually feeling? What am I locating here in my own soul? That was probably 10 minutes. Okay. I probably laid just laid there quietly in bed trying to locate the emotion and get a little more definition to it, right? Not mm -hmm. just say, well, I just kind of feel crappy today. Go, no, 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 no. Put some more words to that. Like be, be a student of your own soul. Be kind, be attentive, care for the soul. So that was 10 minutes for me to locate, oh, wait a second. I, this is loneliness. And this is an old place in me. Like, I, I can recognize that. It's like, oh, I re I, yes, I know this old place. Ten minutes to get there. And then about three minutes to recognize the warfare was also on it. It was like, yeah, but, but something else is here because I don't just feel lonely in this moment. I feel oppressed. I feel, mm. like, bereft disconsolate. Yes. Like there was more to it than that. And I could tell, whoa, if I just go live this out, this is going to be really dark. Like this is going to be low. Right. So then stage two, it was, I better get up and pray about this. Now it's time to get out of bed and go be serious about this. Like, don't just leave this unattended. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't just notice right. it right. and go, huh. Then it was walk out into the living room and what I want to describe for our friends about how, how do you handle these vulnerable places? Well, here we go. What I needed to do was give it my focused attention for a moment and actually go to that place. Because what we tend to do is we pull away from the places that cause us pain or, or embarrassment right. or whatever the discomfort is, the yes. places that f make us feel like, really, again, I'm, I'm walking around the mountain one more time here. You know, how many laps around Jericho? Like, <laughs> I forget which one I'm on here. Yeah. We just tend to pull away. But what I needed to do was walk directly into it and go, oh, okay, I, I know this place. And here's the thing. There's a legitimate issue of the heart. 
Mm-hmm. I, I do experience loneliness. Like, you know, a couple of my closest friends in my life are, are now with God. And that's just a reality, yes. right? Like that's okay. It, is, it isn't like a sin. It isn't even brokenness mm-hmm. to be lonely. Right. Okay? So to locate that, but then to also be aware of, but wait a second, I'm also feeling like God is far away. And I know that's not true. Right. He's never far away. And so it was beginning to go, okay, step one, walk straight into the center of this place. I actually need to enter the loneliness. Which is so counterintuitive, right? Like when you feel that or have those thoughts or get hit with something, everything within the human mind and body, I think, is eject, go the other way. Oh, absolutely. Avoid. Just get on with your day. Right. Like right now, the ideal thing to do is go, just go get breakfast, get some granola, check the news. <laughs> you know, I always check the weather. Right. Like, in other words, distract, preoccupy. That will make me feel better. Mm-hmm. I'll feel better if I run. Right. right? Some kind of self-medication yes. or distraction. Or distraction. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But instead, it is so critical to actually enter that place and begin to love God mm. there. And, and because the issue was God for me, it was in my loneliness, I think I was also experiencing loneliness of God. Like, you're not here either. You're not helping. You're right. Yeah. That, yeah. that wow. vague kind of collection of feelings, which the enemy is just pouring over the world right now, by the way, that mm bereft of God, I can't find God, disappointment with God, like that's out there in the air and in the spiritual environment. I needed to walk into my actual loneliness and begin to love Jesus in that place because I'm I'm doing two things now. I need soul care, Mm -hmm. but I also need to get this warfare off of me. Right. Because if I don't get the warfare off, you're not going to sort anything else out. No. Like you you don't reason with spiritual warfare. You don't reason with a demon. Like you <laughs> you don't talk yourself out of it. You don't just feel your way out of it in a couple of hours. Well, I'll just be better. You know, the warfare doesn't just go away. So walk into it. I begin to love God and pray for union with him in this place. Like, but I have you but I have you, Lord, and I pray for union with you here because as the soul begins to love God, it opens the soul up to God and to experience God again. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you a question about it, which is what's going through your mind, what you see when you're doing this? When you say, I go into it with God, what is that experience so you can locate this in your soul. You can like find the radiating source of what is it? Fear or shame or you know, dread over the new day or regret over mm-hmm. let's let's take regret. Say it's regret over something that you said last night. You know, you were in a small group and somebody shared and you shared and then you you woke up with regret. Yes. Don't run from the regret. Walk straight into it. Like start walking with the attention of your heart, the focus of your attention straight into it. And you literally are going to go inhabit it. Go, okay, well, part of my heart, part of my soul is feeling a lot of regret right now. Like you said, what we normally want to do is distance ourselves. Right. Let me just flip on the news. Right. You know, um, or let me go quickly write an apology email. No, not, not yet. <laughs> not yet. What I'm doing, Alan, is I am giving it my focused attention. And as I do, I'm literally like walking towards the regret in my soul. Wow. Okay? Okay. And in that place, then I allow myself to feel it. Oh, there it is. Whoa, yep. Sure feel a lot of regret over what happened last night. Okay. I found it, right? Like jackpot. Here we go. And then in that moment and in that place, I start loving Jesus. I just start saying, I love you, Jesus. Right here, right now, in this, I love you. I love you. Mm-hmm. I love you. And that that takes three, 
minutes. That takes five minutes to like, just do it. Like mm-hmm. you just start, I'm not feeling love for Jesus yet. And you're not confessing something. You're nope. not apologizing nope. to God. Yeah. I apologize, right. not trying to fix it. Yeah. I'm, I'm walking into the vulnerable place. And from that place, I love God. I love you here, Jesus. I love you here. Because as soon as you do that, I guarantee you in the first three seconds, your soul opens up to God. Yes. Even almost before your consciousness does, Mm -hmm. right? It turns the soul back towards the sun. You know how flowers will kind of follow the sun through the day, right? Yeah. And here in Colorado in our cold evenings, you know, in the fall, flowers will close up overnight. And then as the sun comes out in the morning, they open back up. It's really a lovely, lovely picture of the soul. This is exactly what I'm describing. It is, as I love God, my soul begins to open back to him. Mm. And then I ask for union. I'm like, Jesus, come here in this. I don't apologize for it. I don't yet, if, you know, maybe there is apology needed at some point, but I just say right here, right now in this place. Yes. I need union with you here. Hmm. Now, I want to take our listeners back for a moment, Alan, because you described something like this in a podcast this fall. Right. Where God took you back to an emotion that you had kind of run from. Right. And it was like the auto accident story. Right. It was the October 31st podcast. So it was on Halloween that the podcast came out. And that morning before we had the podcast, God brought me back into a memory of something that happened when I was 15 years old. On Halloween? On Halloween night. Oh, so that was kind of the That was the connection, yeah, right. okay. But what he did was bring me back into a really vulnerable place that since my 15th year experience there, that had been a real source of loss and shame and regret. You crashed a car. I crashed a car coming home from a party midnight on Halloween, That a party I shouldn't have been at and passed out on the way home, had guys in the car with me. Everybody miraculously ended up okay, but yeah, I totaled the car. I wake up after a couple of minutes of being unconscious, cars total, smoke everywhere, crowd of about 100 people around me. The guy who's home, I'm in the yard of a home and had knocked into several trees in that front yard, and the guy's on his doorstep yelling at me, and the friends are gone, and I crawl across the shattered glass out the passenger door because the my door won't open, and just start walking home. It, it was about, uh, I don't know, three, four miles. And I start walking home. The crowd's yelling at me to stay, don't go. It was a bizarre situation. And that whole walk home, I just made a lot of agreements. I, I had a concussion. I didn't know it at the time, but made a lot of agreements mm-hmm. of, uh, I am all alone. This was all my fault. I'm an idiot. Uh, I've lost what I had worked for for two summers, mowing yards and saving money, and and I have no vehicle. I don't know if my friends are alive. I don't know where they are. They've either abandoned me or maybe they're in the hospital somewhere or on the side of the road. Like, I don't know where they are. And so all these agreements was I walked by myself at midnight on Halloween. They all seem absolutely true and real. And so I, I get home and... I was a different person when I got home and had lived with that shame and isolation and feeling of abandonment for most of my life in, it was in a buried kind of hidden place. Exactly. Because I never dealt with it. I felt like the best thing to do with that story was shove it down, avoid it, don't go to it, don't run to it, run away from it. Yeah. And so, John, as you were telling your story from this morning, um, when I was saying it felt counterintuitive, like until that podcast we did on Halloween a few months ago, I had never gone there with God, and he invited me there. And when I went to that place with him of young, early shame, abandonment, 
feeling of um, blowing it, inadequacy. When I went to those places, God showed me something that I never expected, which was he, he replayed the scenes of that night and how he was with me mm. on that walk. And so I literally saw Jesus with me on that four-mile, three-mile walk, and he was right there with his arm around my shoulder there there was no condemnation from him there was and i wasn't trying to apologize to him in in those moments he was actually taking me there in one of the most vulnerable spots of of my being and offering healing yes offering his presence his presence yes yes because once you get his presence there yes then it's possible to break agreements Yes. Or to get rid of shame. Yes. To pray against it if need be, right? Right. Yeah. And honestly, that did not take a long time. I mean, that happened in probably less than half an hour of just time with God. And I have not felt any of the weight of that since then. It was mm. it was immensely freeing and it wasn't me doing much of the work, actually much of the talking work at all, it was just experiencing his presence in it. In the vulnerable place. Yes. And this, this is what we're after, folks. Because now I'm thinking of that Ephesians 4 passage where Paul says, in your anger, don't sin. Don't let the sun go down while you were still angry and give the devil a foothold. Now, anger is not some special sin in the Bible, okay? It, he's using it as an example of these vulnerable places, these unresolved things. If you run from them yes, and you let the sun go down, quote unquote, metaphorically speaking, he's like, you let time go by. Yes. Then the, this is where the enemy will bully you. Mm -hmm. This is where he'll try and set up some kind of attack against you. Right. And, and in my case, most of my life after that, I felt, I would use the word now, I felt like an orphan. And I could never have told you why I felt like that. It just was a feeling of you're all alone. Life is all up to you. And you may not have what it takes when it really comes down to it. You may crash it all. And I never connected it to that car accident, mm, mm. but it was a vulnerable place for me for decades. Yes. And the enemy used, you are, right? right. Absolutely. You, you are alone. You are an idiot. He used that against you over the years. And the more the agreement firmed and kind of set, the more real it felt. So it didn't even feel like a vulnerable place I needed to go into. It just felt like, no, that's just reality. Exactly. It doesn't necessarily have to be agreements, gang. So I, I don't want us to get lost on that. This actually isn't a podcast about agreements. It's about vulnerable places and how the enemy will use those to come after you. So he'll just take a feeling. I mean, everybody's had the experience of waking up to a bump in the night you hear a thud, mm -hmm. you hear the window rattle, something like, was that something at the door? And suddenly your adrenaline goes right. through the roof and, and fear. You yes. Okay, so you feel a natural human fear, but then the enemy pours gas on it. He's like, ah, I've got a vulnerable moment. And suddenly now you are feeling mm -hmm. you know, like major fear, terror, dread. Someone's breaking in my house. You know, I need to call 911. When in fact it was just the wind yes. or the cat, everybody's had something like that where it's not an agreement. He, he can simply take an emotion or a state of being. So let me come back to my state of being. There is a genuine loneliness that I woke up to this morning that is simply true of my life. The enemy was pouring on warfare before I even gained consciousness, yeah. where what I woke up to was feeling bereft, feeling like God was far away, that there was something far larger going on, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. I, I hadn't even gotten to the level of agreements yet. He can work at this in a lot of ways in these vulnerable places. 
and I think this is going on a lot right now, right? We're giving people a huge tool yes. here. In fact, I was talking to Jeff, the head of intercession for Wild at Heart before the holidays, and he was making the observation. He says, I really see the goodness of God right now in people's lives, but I also see the enemy coming after vulnerable places. And that that really triggered something for me. I'm like, yep, that's really true. Whether it's shame or loneliness or fear or a sexual brokenness or what it might be, we need to be aware that, of course, this is where the enemy is going to work. How do you deal with it? Well, first, you walk straight into the center of it. Like Jesus literally walked with you back into the four-mile walk. Right. You know, he, he, wanted to, he wanted to get you back into that and walk with you. You go into it instead of running from it. I am feeling regret. I am feeling fear. I am feeling, you know, whatever it is, lust. I'm going to walk straight into that and I'm going to start loving God right here. Even if what I'm feeling is forsaken by God, I'm going to start loving God right here, even even if I'm embarrassed to bring this to God, Mm -hmm. or even if I feel like you did, that God was nowhere. He wasn't in that night. Okay, regardless of how you feel towards God, you begin loving Jesus from the center of that vulnerable place. Because what we're trying to do is get Christ in there. What we need is not discipline or a new set of resolutions. Right. And John, at this first stage, like your story, you woke up with a feeling and you knew enough to to go into it. But can you not wait for the moment as well? If it's something that has happened before, can you proactively? Absolutely. In fact, I, I recommend it. I think this is a regular part of the practice that we call the care of the soul, Hmm. is that with the help of Christ and with the Holy Spirit, you are aware of at least some of the vulnerable places. You're vulnerable to feeling abandoned. You're vulnerable to rage. You're vulnerable to envy. Like, you you know your own soul, folks. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, you're going to get to know your own soul better and better this year. So yeah, I think proactively, especially in company with Jesus, when you are in your time with God, you're in your car and you just decide to turn the music off and just give God some space, Mm -hmm. right? When you're in your evening prayers or whenever it is, you're taking a walk with the dog. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can say, Jesus, where are we working? Where are you bringing wholeheartedness in me? That's good. But I find that the enemy will, he'll show you. Like, let's, let's, let's let him overplay his hand. He will, he will show you what's he attacking right now. I'll Mm -hmm. guarantee you, whatever it is you're experiencing, like, I am just so mad at my kids right now. I'm just, you go, okay, we'll go there for a second and ask Jesus, Lord, what's the vulnerable place? What else is operating here? Hmm. For me, I was feeling forsaken. It began as simple as I'm not looking forward to the day. But I knew it was more than that. And I knew that in this climate, uh, the enemy is fiercely opposing the saints right now. And that's why I wanted to do this podcast, is to say, mostly in the places of vulnerability, what do you do? Go there feel it, name it, love Jesus in that place. Ask for union. Because as you begin to get even a measure, just a measure of the Mm -hmm. presence of God there, (laughs) right? You get a couple ounces of Jesus in there. It will help you then. Do you need to break some agreements? Do you need to say, wait a second, I, I am lonely, but I'm not abandoned. I reject abandonment. That's good. Right? I regret what I said last night, but I also reject all shame. Mm. Romans 8.1, there's no condemnation now 
for me because I'm in Christ. Like no to shame. Yes. No to fear. No to sexual temptation. Like no, uh uh-uh. Like, yes, I'm feeling whatever it is, the regret, you know, the lust. Okay, I'm feeling that, but I I now bring the triumph of Christ against the enemy here and the way that he's attacking this vulnerable place. The reason that I started with get Jesus there is if all you do is is say, well, I I bind fear or I I I reject, you know, shame, but the place is still vulnerable. And Christ hasn't inhabited that place. Yes. Well, the enemy is going to be back on your heels in ten minutes or ten days. Yeah, and in some of those places, I've noticed if I don't invite Jesus into it, before long, I'm feeling irritated at God, or disappointed in God for for letting me down. Bingo. Like, and and so the very act of inviting Him there counters that in the best possible way. It really does, friends. I mean, Alan and I are here to tell you this works. Yes. And this is a reality for the saints right now. It really is. The attacks in the vulnerable places. And yeah, like a friend was sharing, she's she's been having trouble sleeping lately. And it feels spiritual to her. She's aware something's disrupting my sleep. I don't know what it is, but doggone it. And and she was mad at God. Hmm. And there it is. There it is. Instead of going into doggone it and I love you here, yes. she had gone into doggone it and I am pulling away from you right now. Right. Oh, well, that just leaves you all the more vulnerable and that's what the enemy wants you to do. Exactly. He he wants you to both pull away from the vulnerability because it's embarrassing or It's what? just me. Yeah. He wants you to pull away from the vulnerability so that you don't attend to it, so that it stays, mm-hmm. you know, it's like an empty room in the house. But he also wants you to pull away from God. And that is a dangerous place oh, to be. Oh, then he's got you. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so this morning, okay, Jesus, there is some truth to the fact that, that I experience loneliness, not every day, not every week, but, but there's just some truth to that. Mm-hmm. I think it was Henry Nouwen wrote this beautiful passage on how every human soul experiences a fundamental level of loneliness because even your best friends or your spouse or your kids, they, they don't live with you through every moment of your day. Right. And they certainly can't live with you through every internal experience. So a lot of your life, you are navigating, quote, alone, yes. which is why it is so critical to get Christ there. So, yes, Lord, I woke up feeling really lousy. I've located a place of loneliness in me, but something else is here too, and it's dark, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to shape my outlook for a long time. So I love you. I love you right here. I love you right now in this place. I just begin to love you. And and it's a defiance against the darkness. And it's choosing God. You may not feel close right now, right? right? You may not feel like you're helping, but I choose you and I love you. And I pray for union. And as I did that, oh, there he is. I, then I could find Jesus. Mm. It's like, oh, there you are. There you are. I, you're with me. You always have been. Come into this place. Let's, let's get a deeper level of union here, Jesus. I, I, I invite you in. That's good. Okay. And then, and then as I'm beginning to do better, then it is, and I bring the triumph of Christ against this assault because I realized I wasn't just feeling an emotion. I was under a kind of attack, mm-hmm. a kind of oppression mm-hmm. of the enemy. And he'll, gang, by the way, he'll try and keep this stuff subtle as long as he can because if it's super overt, right then you're just going to be triggered to pray against it, right? Right. 
I was like, nah, uh, uh, uh. Like it is robbing me of joy. It is robbing me of a sense of the presence of God. It's robbing me of looking forward to my day. I bring the triumph of Jesus Christ against this, and I banish the enemy now. And for me, I was kind of, I banish forsakenness. I I banish that. This is my fundamental reality. Like, no, I reject that. You were rejecting shame. Right. Well, in a sense of being abandoned, nobody ever being there for me. Yes. Because of the the friends that left. Yes. And so it was a mix of things. And John, recently, like in the last week, Kelly and I have been able to speak into each other's lives. We've given each other permission to name some of the vulnerabilities with Mm. each other that the other one doesn't see because it feels so normal and natural that it's a blind spot. Mm. And so the ability to just say, hey, when you really tightened up or kind of overreacted to this, did you realize it? And it was a fascinating conversation because both for her and for me to go, no, 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 that that makes total sense. I did this because of either who I am, the situation, and to be able to say, yeah, there's some factual parts and the overreaction or or the response mm. indicates a vulnerable spot yes. that's worth going into. Yeah. So that's good if you have somebody close in your life yes. to, to just maybe give them permission to go. Yes. Flag something if you see it. Yes. You know who's great at this, gang, is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You can ask, Holy Spirit, where am I vulnerable right now? In in fact, um, we have a thing called the Daily Prayer. It's on the website, and it's on the Wild at Heart app under the prayers section. It's got several different iterations to it. There's a short one, a long one. The daily prayer used to go like this. There was a section of confession where it said, search me, know me. I forget what the early language was, but it was sort of like reveal every place that is not pleasing to you, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, I don't want to pray. I don't want every single piece of data right now. (laughs) What I pray now, which is in in the version of the prayer now, is search me, know me, reveal where you are working. That's so good. In my life, God. And so that's a good thing to pray, gang. It's just to, you know, you're going to walk away from this podcast going, huh? Okay, okay, Jesus, okay, Holy Spirit, where am I vulnerable right now to my enemy? And he's going to use the vulnerability against me. I don't, I don't want that. I want you there. And the good news, gang, the delicious rescue of the gospel, Paul summarizes in Colossians 1, it is Christ in you. Yes, there's a place for discipline, of course. Yes, there's a place for confession, of course. But the hope, the rescue, the provision of God is as we open up our vulnerable places to him, this is exactly what Paul was urging us to do in Ephesians 4. It's like, don't run. Get Christ here. Yeah. As we open up the vulnerable places, Jesus will inhabit that place, and then it's not vulnerable anymore. Now, that doesn't mean my loneliness has gone away. Mm -hmm. It's just way back down into perspective, right? and all the other goodness of my life is back into perspective, and I'm not just living with one sort of reality. And you've kept the union between you and God open and strong. Because not only is that issue back kind of to a normal setting, but but the enemy has lost the ability to break union exactly. between you and God. To break union. There you go. That's really good. Yeah, so the hope is you, you go there, you feel it, you enter it, you name it, and you begin loving Jesus in that place. And you pray for union You pray for union with Christ there. The soul is made for union with God. And then, yeah, by all means. And I reject this temptation. I banish this to judgment in the name of the Lord. I reject this fear. I banish it to the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, of course, you also do that. 
but having Christ with you now, building union in this place, developing union in this place, oh my gosh, then it doesn't have to be an ongoing vulnerability. So good. I think it's huge for folks right now in this hour. I really do. And so we wanted to offer this in love today here early in the year. 